G'day guys, today we'll just take a bit of a look at um, seafood and the content and also the sort of selenium content um, in fish that can mitigate by chelating um, the mercury. So let's just take a look, just let's get our periodic table, you know, the sort of the elements right as we start. So when we're looking at H so HG symbol for mercury and for selenium it's E is the element for selenium so okay just so we, we're clear what we're talking about um, so quite clear we'll also take a bit of a squeeze quickly at sort of uh, some of the arty like that. Um, this is the sort of recommendations that they recommend for adults. Uh, fairly much, slightly more for for pregnant women, but you know these are basically you know the minimum. They're not the optimal, so we always have to remember that. Um, if you're if, Remember the study that I actually mentioned that I'd read back in 2006 as I was flying out of the country. Um, and it was basically that uh, 250 micrograms of selenium can reduce cancer in a population which, within a, um, a placebo double um, a randomized control study, clinical study this was, um, by 46%. At 200 micrograms, which was an American study, a US study that was done earlier, um, basically that study showed uh, uh, was slightly lower, showed a 42% reduction. So you know it doesn't seem like the higher you go, that uh, um, you don't get it, you do get benefits in that that regard. So these are the sort of foods that you know. Yellowfin tuna out of the animal foods tend to be quite high. Let me just increase that. So you can see the animal, um, you know, six ounces. You're looking at tuna. Um, if you're getting six ounces, you're looking at 184 um, micrograms, which is fairly good, you know, um, in that regard. Serving a tuna a day um, uh, with a, you know, a couple of eggs, because eggs also have 15 eggs. Um, sorry, one egg has 150. Now, just to put this in context, because it's very important, on average, if you remember that guy that actually consumed 25 eggs a day, on average, times 15, that's 375. And he was healthy as a fiddle and had no issue whatsoever. So, you know, we can go quite high, 375, where the, the levels, this was on a daily base, this person was consuming this amount, the levels are, um, you know, the upper tolerance is considered 400 micrograms. So, you know, you really have to go substantially higher to get into toxic levels. Um, there are certain things, conditions, chronic intake. Um, can early indicators of excess intake of um, uh, is garlic odor in the breath, metallic taste in the in the mouth, uh, most common kinds of um, chronically high selenium intake, is selenosis, uh, hair and nail loss, or brittleness, other thought, sort of things, uh, um, you know, sort of nervous system, nausea, diarrhea, skin rashes, um, you know, sort of uh, malted teeth, um, fatigue, irritability, um, you know, the vegans don't even need selenium, they, they just have it and nervous system abnormalities but you know how many people literally will go and eat a handful of brazil which potentially can have quite high levels way over sort of 
sort of the RDIs. So, you know, I recommend people, you know, go crazy on selenium in that regard. But, uh, you know, ha where is the threshold? The real, the actual real threshold is, uh, you know, there is a big question mark on it. And so we, we have to be sensible in one respect, but at the other, at the other um, end, you know, not be too overly concerned. So if you were to get to the same levels as a 25 egg example, but, um, okay, so let's, that was 375 divided by, and where's beef, ground beef, 18. So we'll use the ground beef because that's all they've are they, they, ah they've actually got around a state. Okay, so thirty-three. So let's basically um you know divide that by thirty-three, and then times that by three. Get from a stake point of view to get up to the same level as twenty-five eggs a day. Thirty four ounces um, of beef so that's quite a bit you know so nobody's going to sort of get to those those sort of levels times 28 point which is a one ounce that's how many grams it is so that the you know 965 66 grams so it's about a kilo of meat to get to the same level as uh, you know probably somebody like sean baker can get to those levels because a kit for that um we're looking at um times 2.2 so we're looking at 2.1 um for the equivalent of those 25 eggs 2.1 um, pounds so quite a lot of meat um, so you can have shitloads of meat you know um, you're gonna really struggle to get to the to those to the to that threshold which they talk about in the RDI eyes so um, you know not an issue it's usually seafood that much um, you know Brazil nuts and as carnivores we don't consume them anyway and most animal products are in the sensible range. Probably one of the highest is tuna, you know, but most people will have, you know, um, pretty much a serving of tuna, which is, you know, I'll have six, um, uh, six ounces of tuna, um, uh, and that makes it 184 micrograms. So that's way below, you know, 180, 84 divided by 400 you're basically looking at less than half um the rdi or the upper tolerance i mean so not an issue um and i sort of question the upper tolerance considering the amount of um tuna that the japanese consume so but i'm just gonna basically say that's what the official line is about the rdi that you know the upper tolerance um you want to exceed that that's your issue i tend to basically get into the 300 range 350 um, range normally um, very um, cancer protective and in and also good for detoxification of uh, you know metals heavy metals and stuff like that um, i don't push it beyond that um, just because i like to play it safe but the thing is um, there is a mark on the other upper tolerance it used to be 500 micrograms it was brought back down to, um, to 400 without any real clinical science so you know um and and this really happened at a same at a very similar time after some of the studies came out showing that selenium actually was really good for cancer now i'm not saying that the authorities are basically playing you know playing down selenium for their own reasons um, but it seemed very coincidental that that happened at the same time. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that people need to go crazy over four. You know, I would say if you if you can get it 
around you know the 350 um you know that mark and average it out throughout the week because you're going to be eating other foods you're not going to be eating fish every day and if you average it out around the 300 odd mark you'll be in a in terms of detoxification of heavy metals and uh, because there's a lot of heavy metals in our environment let's say we walk around the streets we're breathing in heavy metals all the time from from the exhaust of vehicles and all sorts of things and chemicals and stuff like that so you know keep that in mind but don't go crazy at the same time i don't want you to put yourself at risk um because when we've got question marks on uh, on some of the science play it safe um in that regard but that was just to give you an idea an illustration um in that regard and then you can go to this government website which is and i would go to the health professional so go to and i so ods.od.nih.gov forward slash fact sheets forward slash selenium hyphen health professionals forward slash and that will basically and health professional is one word and that will basically end you at this location and you can basically get that information and sort of mix and match foods um to get those um you know those three which will give you um that i mean if you don't if you're not dealing with any city or whatever like that in your life you you know you probably don't really have to care you know but adding some some foods that are higher in selenium you know um if you eat good enough amounts of um meat with some eggs you'll get more than enough that you that you require so that's just a, a general general point now so now that we know what the elements are which is important so i can actually then go to my study okay so this is the actual study i'll just get to the top so it's an italian study that was done in 2001 and it's basically looking at the content of mercury and selenium in fish so to basically um look at the sort of levels um and you know sort of safety levels as well so i'll just read the, the top part um so the mercury and selenium content of, of um, fresh seafood we determine risk um respectively by means of cold vapor atomic absorption spectroscopy and hydride um generation atomic absorption spe um spectrometry so these are me methods of basically vaporizing the sort of stuff and taking the measurements to get a precise measurement so they're sort of the industry standard that everybody uses um so they the numbers can be uh, fairly reliable um in that regard so all the values obtained were lower than the european union legal limit of 0 0.5 uh, kilogram fresh flesh food um and rising to one milligram per kilogram for the edible parts of some listed species in fish and varying between 0 0.57 micrograms per kilogram in sole and 0 0.57 micrograms per kilogram in swordfish so even the swordfish um, for a kilo for just slightly over the actual limit um, of the the bottom that bo sort of the bottom range um, of that you know of that sort of uh, area which is still below but it's sort of for somewhere between that um, you know relatively safe um, point so they're also looking at the selenium levels obviously and we'll get down down there they vary between 0 0.073 uh, milligrams per kilogram so let's go back to what we were looking before and for tuna up to 0 0.743 milligrams per kilogram and that's bluefin tuna not the yellow fin that we're actually looking at so just give me a sec so if we come back to that that is that figure so so in micrograms seven 
So if we divide, if we divide that by um, by ten, we end up with forty three point four. So as you can see, yellowfin, the yellowfin um, uh, tuna has slightly more um, in comparison, which is which is good because you have to remember that. Um, Yellowfin tuna is the most popular one that's actually in the commercial arena. Um, and uh, the more expensive one, which is the bluefin tuna, which comes from the Southern Oceans around to the south of Australia and New Zealand, tend to have less selenium. Um, same, they, they, they will tend to have slightly less mercury as well um, for the simple reason that they're in sort of areas. But at the same time, you know, it's very little the difference between the mercury levels. It's very minute at the differences. So we can say the yellowfin tuna, which has always been considered slightly less expensive and you know not as prestigious as you know on the sort of the balance between mercury and um, and selenium, actually does better. So you know um, uh, you know leave all the bluefin tuna to the Japanese. They love it. They can have the, they can have the, but they do consume far more. So it's probably a good thing that, that, that it has slightly less selenium in that regard. Uh, yes. Let's get back to this. This, um, uh, we'll look at some of the other things like um, crustaceans and stuff like that. They tend to vary quite a bit in their content and all that. So, Let's get to it. So we've got to go right through now and just take a quick look. As we can see, these are the sort of, I mean, these are the sort of quantities in that regard. So I'll leave them up on the screen for a while. I'll, I'll go through them slowly so people can actually just, you know, f you know, um, uh, scan through them, um, then basically freeze it, um, uh, so they can actually take a look when they um, and ta and record down the numbers and stuff like that. So they may be interested in specific type of fish. The ratios are very important um, in terms of mercury, so the quantity. Of selenium. So as you can see, this one has higher selenium levels, much lower levels of mercury, and you know, the lower these ratios are, the better. So in between mercury and the selenium. So that means if we look at this fish here oops so that has a fairly low so hack has a fairly low level of mercury to selenium so even compared to cod um, even the Icelandic cod has far more um, in terms of selenium so obviously you won't go crazy on this fish but at the same time um, it is much lower compared to tuna just to understand, this is basically this is bluefin tuna. And as you can see, bluefin tuna is quite low as well compared to swordfish. But even swordfish, which is one of the sort of you could say, you know, garfish and swordfish would basically be the the most problematic fish in comparison. You know, but even even here, sort of the ratios. If you look at these sort of ratios, you know, it's quite it's relatively on the on the high side. But still, there is, um, you know, there's plenty of there's a bit more selenium to mitigate to some extent. You know, it's not a one to one as an example. But again, it's not a fish that basically. You, you want to go crazy over where tuna on the other hand you know like 
like cod. Um, uh, you know, and also like halibut, which is point. You know, it's actually lower than halibut. It's lower than um than basically Icelandic tuna. It's lower than uh, uh, sorry um cod. It's lower than Norwegian cod, which are considered quite good, quite good fish and all that. So, and this is bluefin tuna, and I can tell you that um, there's more selenium in yellowfin tuna. So, yellowfin tuna is even lower than that. It's probably getting to about zero point one in terms of ratio. So, it's fairly a fairly safe fish in that regard. So, you know, it's slightly above hack, which is very very has a very low ratio. So when people go, when people are out there saying that, oh, tuna's got a lot of mercury in it and um, stuff like that, it's got plenty of selenium also to mitigate that, you know, to, to chelate it and get it out of there. So keep that in mind because sometimes people sort of uh, forget these important issues and, uh, you know, it's a, there's, a, there's a lot of nonsense um, out there. So it's very important that people just understand. Um, I'll go through, I'll just explain this. Um, you know, selenium, you know, while it, it has a lot of detoxification support, it supports basically your thyroid as well. I think I've mentioned that in the conversion of T4 to T3. It does a number of things. It also acts as an antioxidant. But also it has another role in, um, in the body in terms of detoxification and what it does is it's sort of um uh, you know in its in its metabolic really reduced um reduction reduced form selenium sort of uh, um uh, is sort of converted to this thing called you know sort of hydrogen um selenide and uh, you know which requires which we have plenty of in our diet sulfur amino acid cysteine and methionine so if you're eating a carnivore diet, you're eating plenty of the sulfur amino acids. You know, so you're not going to have a problem there. You know, and you will be able to produce enough selenide to combine. You know, and what selenide does, it combines with heavy metal ions. So it chelates these heavy metal ions, and actually, and in particular, mercury and cadmium. You know, which we all know that mercury and cadmium. You know fairly nasty things so you know selenium can actually chelate those and get them out of the system but this is really important that people understand you know if on the other hand because selenide is not you know when it chelates these sort of um uh, these sort of metals it's not very stable it's it's very it's very how can i say prone to reactivity so if you've got a highly, if you're consuming, you know, a shit diet, like a sad diet, um, like a lot of people do, and then basically saying, well, which is also deficient in selenium, and then basically supplementing selenium in a, such a reactive environment, you know, basically wasting on a supplement because the reactivity of the highly inflammatory environment could basically break that those bonds of the selenide with those metal ions so the heavy metal ions so you know it may not be as effective at detoxing your body from those um, heavy metal ions so you know how well it works has to do with what sort of environment um, you know selenium is operating in so if it's a very toxic highly inflammatory highly reactive environment it's not going to work as well as in a, in a lower inflammatory environment that tends to be sort of a low carb keto carnivore type environment um, within your body so that's an important thing that people need to remember um, uh, when it comes to how well selenium works in that regard so basically eating a whole lot of junk or and crap and basically you know then on top of that um having the occasional fish is not going to really help you to the same level so keep that in mind guys um you know so these are the sort of levels we're looking at so you know 
Alaskan Pollock is pretty good as well in terms of ratio. So we've got a we've got a couple of fish, you know. And you know, salmon again, pretty good, you know. It's got less selenium. It's got half the amount of mercury, but you know, um, so in a in a sort of a more reactive environment, um, uh, you know, you would recommend lower um, foods that are much lower in um, mercury because for the simple fact that these people, um, uh, you know, really not doing the right thing by their bodies. So, but in but in um, our sort of more cleaner um, diets, um, we can. We, we could have a greater variety, let's put it that way, in terms of that. So let's look at some of these other ones. You know, as you can see, you know, when it comes to sardines and red bandfish, fairly low. Sole is fairly low, you know. The scorpion fish, that's pretty low. That A lot of people, um, you know, use that sort of fish for, um, you know, making soups and stuff like that. On the other hand, if you look at perch, look at the ratio. It's getting, perch, even though it's a small fish, you know, and doesn't have a lot of mercury, but has very, in comparison, has very low levels of selenium. So while perch would be something that would be recommended by many people, you know, its sort of level or its ratio is much closer to things like swordfish. So just because um, a fish has low mercury, if it has low levels of selenium to deal with that mercury, you know, that's a problem. So you definitely don't want to be consuming a lot of perch, you know, for that simple reason. So it's it's more than just the mercury, you know. It you know selenium is a big player in what you pick as fish. So ratios are very important, guys. Um, you know, mullet has a good ratio. So is mackerel. That's another fish with a very good um, ratio. So those are the sort of things that you want to look at um, as fish to sort of focus on that have got these really good ratios um, in comparison between mercury and selenium. So we'll just pop down here. You know. So it's not the, so we need to always remember it's a lot of people talk about the amount of mercury in things, but really it's important to, you know, how much selenium is there to mitigate some of this sort of stuff. So we'll just, that's pretty much the last one on that. So as you can see, um, squid, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite foods, has a beautiful low ratio. The other thing is it's got quite a bit of copper. It's got a really copper to zinc ratio, really good. So if you need to get additional copper into that, it's a, the go-to, um, uh, you know, part of the seafood family, you know, that is really good for us in that regard. So, you know, lobster um, doesn't have, you know, has very little, as you can see, even less per kilogram. It's bugger all, you know, in terms of that. It's one of those. So if you're sensitive um, to mercury, you, or you've got some mercury poisoning and you want to have some seafood, then, you know, you're looking at, you, then you'll be focused on smaller amounts, like seafood that have got smaller amounts, like lobster, you know, like squid, and that have got lower ratios as well. So these are the sort of things. And at the same time, you, you're getting from the squid, um, you, you're getting more copper. So you may basically say, well, I don't like liver. I need to get more copper into my diet for sorolaplasmin and also for iron metabolism, you know, and you go, well, I'll have a bit of squid, you know, so I'll add that into my diet as a food. So that's the sort of things, you know, um, you know, mussels are fantastic. I mean, you know, 
they are just brilliant and they they have shitloads of minerals when it comes to copper um, zinc all the different minerals iron and everything else they are just a basically a superfood and as you can see um, they've got a brilliant ratio look at the selenium levels compared to the mercury levels you know now you know why i talk i talk highly about muscles and i encourage people to basically um you know have muscle soups and stuff like that and uh, you know constantly in that regard it's pretty much nothing under there under other than the, some of the links for that the study actually um, sourced some details for so that's pretty much it and that was basically just to give people an idea of you know what the con you know the amount of these things are in these foods and sort of to give you an idea of what you can mix and match of what you can pick in terms of seafood to combine um, in your diet um, you know don't go crazy on the selenium side but at the same time um, there's a lot of question marks on those upper limits as well uh, you know if you're primarily occasionally having um, seafood in your diet you know you know twice a twice a week or something like that um, some eggs and mostly you're never going to get into you're going to be struggling to even get into the 200 microgram level, let alone into toxic levels or whatever you'd have to fish every day ounce um, to ever get into any real issues and problems in that way what you can do is you can look at the those sort of foods and then say well mm, i'm not getting i'm not eating enough liver because i don't like liver and you know if you don't like it there are other options for minerals and stuff like that. Um, some people don't like oysters. I love oysters. And they may go, mm, well, I don't mind squid. Much easier to eat squid. So there's all these sort of mix and match options that are available to, um, to you. And so that's the whole idea of this uh, you know, um, short vid, just to go through some of the um, those details, provide some information, um, in terms of what's in different what's in different seafood and all that um, and be able to then mix and match um, appropriately in that regard so that is there my uh, milligrams sorry and so you need let me just go back to that you will need to remember and over here so all the, uh, sort of the milligrams and convert it to micrograms so you you know what it is so in a sense the first the simplest way is when you look at for for after that um that decimal point three um, de, um decimal you just basically um move move it that way so there you go a thousand and done so that's pretty much uh, an easy way to calculate that so when you get it from the other from the pdf and you look at um, what a, what the amounts are then you just times it by a thousand you get the micrograms and then you can go to to this site here which is um the NIH site and then sort of mix and match the foods and all that um, in appropriately so that's pretty much it guys um, I hope, hope that was informative about um, selenium its detoxifying ca capacities um, some of the um, hurdles some of the issues relating to selenium and and also um, some of the issues relating to those ratios um, in terms of seafood between mercury and selenium this is some supplemental information so basically what we're looking here at is mercury and selenium content of seafood so first we'll look at edible fish um, the first 13 and we're looking at um, a serving a normal most people would have which is 170 grams or six ounces 
and we've got the actual quantities of mercury and we've also got the quantities of selenium in there and also our molar ratio which is really important so we know what you know low molar ratios um, like for cod which is um, 0 0.2 that's fairly low um, or um, Alaskan Pollock right at the bottom number 12 which is 0 0.15 so that's a low ratio which means there's more selenium in the food that, um, to um, mercury so you've got more chelating factor in there to deal with um, that mercury but even though you know um, if you know a safe approach is always to try and keep um the, the sort of the the amount of intake of mercury below 50 um, micrograms a day so we don't want to really exceed exceed that so we so when we're looking at things like swordfish um even if there was more selenium in that would give it a miss in that regard you know when we've got something like gray fish you know it's fairly high being about nearly 48 um uh, micrograms you know so give that a miss um i would sort of uh, gravitate more towards that sort of middle range of the 50 around about 25 micrograms um and with a good molar ratio so that's how i would sort of um approach most fish so to be there within that mid range and um in particular having a good um uh, ratio between mercury and selenium so definitely, you know, look at those um, low um, levels. Really important, you know. Sort of one of the one of the better ones here would be, you know, like hack in that regard. And another one would be basically your bluefin tuna. Obviously, as I said um, earlier, there is more. Um, more selenium in um, yellowfin tuna so yellowfin tuna would actually be even better than than the number 10 here so the molar rate would even be lower than that but you know the issue is that you don't want to eat too much tuna and you know once a week fine you don't want to make it a you know multiple days a week because there's there is still um a certain level of you know it's it's, it's below 50 micrograms but still you know it's 42.33 still relatively um at the higher sort of level but it's got considerably more selenium than many other foods so it's got a lot of chelating factor so if you're on a non-inflammatory diet without a lot of reactivity um you know but if you're not you know if, if you're basically um too many cheats or um you're still not really at that health point give tuna a miss basically um get your, get your health pro, um you know sorted and then that's for something um at a later stage um where you've got less reactivity you've you've cleared out of all sorts of things and you're in a, a better state so that's the first 13 edible fish um now we'll look at the next lot so these from 14 to 25 they've got really good um uh, sort of uh, ratios and uh, pretty much except one which is the porgy fish every every one of the others is below 25 um uh, micrograms so pretty much any one of those fish i would say that are fairly good excluding just excluding the perch because unfortunately the perch doesn't have a lot of selenium now there's an option is let's say you really like this as a as a food the perch you could say okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically combine perch with a couple of um, eggs that are much higher in selenium and balance out and improve that ratio that's another option you know so um, consider the other foods that you may incorporate into your diet as well. So th those are those are things to take into take into account. Um, you know, sardines are pretty good. 
you know, look at the ratio, you know, it's awesome. But if you're talking about equivalent ratio, but very, um, uh, you know, much lower levels of, uh, you know, mercury, then definitely, you know, mullet would be superior to, to a sardine in that regard. Um, so you've got a few options there in that regard. So um, take your pick, Take what, consider what your favourite is. Um, you know, quite a few of these fish tend to be one of my favourite that I enjoy. So, you know, which is good in that regard. Now let's take a look at, now that we've actually covered all the edible fish, we'll move on to the shellfish. So these are all the sort of, uh, they classified as shell fishes, obviously squid and octopus and stuff like that aren't exactly within the category, but that's the sort of category they put it under. So we'll use this, the same categorization. Pretty much all these, uh, way way their you know their molar ratios are just very low uh, you know they're pretty much yeah you're safe with all these foods and uh, you know the the highest in there is the mediterranean shrimp that's about it you know um and that's pretty much that borderline level of 25.5 um once a week not an issue um most of these other fish that are down in the the um sorry sorry seafood um shellfish type and some of the you know like lobster fairly low then you've got basically um a number of other things here like mussels they're fairly low and it's very high in selenium as you can see there so serving that will give you you know a really good amount of selenium and the ratio is just one of the lowest so you know these are the sort of options you can look at um, and uh, hopefully that'll give you more variety um, in terms of choices and things to pick um, and uh, that you know basically will be um, uh, things that hopefully some of these things that you'll enjoy and give variety to your diet as well uh, quite a few of these are very mineral rich so and it's great that they are basically um, fairly the majority of them are fair very low um, in mercury and quite high in uh, selenium plus a number of other minerals you know like copper you know zinc and many others which are really important to for for the body so you know that's pretty much it um and that these supplementary um slides uh hopefully will help you in your decision making in the sort of selection options that uh, you undertake anyway that's it so i hope that it was informative will be helpful in your decisions making in terms the type of fish you want to incorporate seafood in general incorporate into your diet um and uh, you know that's about it so you got